Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Nate and our company is custom made by us. We do uh, digital printing and design work and uh, direct film printing, transfers, gang sheets. So today's video is um, how to clean up your images. A lot of the times we spend uh, emailing customers that their artwork is not adequate to print uh, due to Unfortunately, just the quality of the artwork. Sometimes it's resolution issues. Other times it's um, there's a lot of um, poor removing of the background. Um, so the background with your eyes looking at the image that's on the screen currently, uh, if you see the checkerboard, that means that it's a transparent background. So anybody looking at this image would think, well, yeah, send it to a DTF. Uh, company let them print it they'll send me my graphic and everything will be fine uh, the reality of this image even though it looks clean is this image would have a white border around the entire image um, because there are transparent pixels that your eyes don't see but the printer does so what the printer does is it picks up those transparent pixels along the edges and it prints a white underbase um, on top of those transparent pixels. So the way you can review your artwork, and I'm doing this in Photoshop because that's the tool that I use. If you use something else, unfortunately, I cannot tell you how that um, is done. So you may have to kind of see if the same options are available to you inside of your graphics editing software. So. Again, this is going to be just for Adobe Photoshop, and I have the most current version through the subscription. I think if you subscribe to Photoshop, it's maybe 20 bucks, $20 a month. So the way that I review somebody's artwork when I get it is I'll hold down the control key on my keyboard, and I'll click on the layer thumbnail. When I do that, it selects the pixels in the image. So you can see this little border is now kind of flashing around the edge of the image. So that's selected the pixels that um, are in the image. So this icon here is to edit in um, quick mask mode. Um, you can press Q, that'll also bring up um, editing in quick mask mode. Uh, the other way to get to it is, um, I believe you can go to select at the top and then edit in quick mask mode. So once you're in this mode, you can zoom in. So I use the Alt key on my keyboard and the, the wheel, scroll wheel on my mouse. So if I hold down Alt and I use my wheel, you can see I can zoom in on this image. And you can see right here along the border of the image is this light gray uh, color. So those are um, transparent pixels. Again, your eyes really don't see them. Our printer does. So oh, the printer is going to print a white underbase on all of these transparent pixels. So that is what we want to clean up is um, these these um, transparent pixels. So if I do Control Zero on my keyboard, it kind of puts the image back in full view. Um, I can zoom in up here on Mary, and you can actually see this has a lot of transparent pixels to be cleaned up. So if I deselect and look at the image, you can kind of see why those transparent pixels are there. There's a little bit of a drop shadow on this image. Actually, if I add another layer, put it underneath this one and just fill this layer with white, you can see this, this little bit of a drop shadow and that's what's gonna create those soft edges and that's gonna create a problem on the print so sometimes people look at that and they go oh that'll look really neat when it prints mm, it's not going to work well you know you don't want that on your image and again when you zoom out on this you're like well, there's nothing wrong with it i mean it looks like a nice image um it is but i mean the reality of it is there's a lot of transparent pixels on there that's going to create issues so this process is what i do to clean it up so to clean it up I'm going to go ahead and um, control, hold control on my keyboard, and then left click the thumbnail in the layer, and you'll see it'll select those pixels again. Uh, Q to edit 
in uh, quick mode, quick mask mode. Um, and then what you do here is you go to image adjustments and then threshold. By default, it sets it to 128. So the lower you go with the number, the less amount of pixels it's going to try to pick up. The higher you go with the number, the more um, it's going to try to pick up. Let me give you a better example of this. So if I zoom in up here where we have the problem with the M, this will be a good example. So now I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Threshold, and I'm going to set it. I'm going to leave the de default value of 128 and click OK. So when I do that, now if I deselect my image and I do a Control shift i which is to select inverse, not my pixels, but so select what's on the outside of my image, and then just press the delete key on the keyboard. It deletes those um, pixels that it selected. So if I do um, Control shift i again to select inward on my image and hit Q. So looking at this, you can see, oh, well, it did, you know, it, it took out a handful of those dead pixels. It left some in there. I mean, it's not it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. So you can still see that this, this gray line is their transparent pixels. And again, it will print white if you have transparent pixels along your image. So if I just control Z back to when I opened up the image, go back to the very beginning. So back to this. And so instead of doing a threshold of 128, I'm going to change it. So again, the higher the number, the more it's going to try to pull it in. So I'm going to try 200. So control click the thumbnail icon, Q. Um, you can see the you know big gray uh, border. So from here, we're going to go into image adjustments, threshold. Now I'm going to set this one to 200. So if you go really low, you can see, oh, I didn't really hit, pick up anything at 2. You know, if you do 10, you know, it makes a little bit of a difference. 128, it's bringing it in more. So this is a kind of a process of elimination. So 200, it, it brings it in quite a bit. You can see it's brought it up almost to the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So if we come out of uh, quick mask mode, Control shift i to select Inverse. Don't, you don't want to delete your images. You want to delete what's outside of the images. Hit delete on the keyboard. So now I'm going to do Control shift i to go back onto my image and then Q for the quick mode, quick mask mode. And when you look at it, this edge does not have that gray border around it any longer. So we'll go down to the bottom here where Christmas is at. Much better on this. You know, you don't have that gray, um, you know, there's a little bit in there. But again, we do a little bit of a choke inside the print software that pulls the ender base in a little bit. So an image like this, you're, you're not going to see a white outline around images. So if you've been sending images to your DTF printer and they're coming out with a white border around them, um, normally it's not the printer. It's the offset, or not the offset. It's your transparent pixels maybe a poor job at removing the background maybe you bought it from Etsy and that's the reality of it is you know but you, you have to understand if you're going to have someone print graphics that you're going to apply the garments that you're going to sell to customers you need to understand how to use tools to clean up those images so again this is um, the process that I do to clear up transparent pixels to not have a white border around your image so I'm going to control Z all the way back out again, the ground zero. So one thing you can do in Photoshop too is to create an action, which is a one button press that will do it by just clicking a play button. So if you don't have this icon here, this is the actions icon, little play button. You just need to go over to window and click on uh, this here to see actions. And that brings up the action menu. Um, if you click the menu, you can say new set, and in this new set, we'll call it uh, DTP, delete transparent pixels. 
So we've got a new folder here. I've already got one up here because obviously I, I use it, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the process to show you how to create an action so you can do it as well. So once you've got your set, you click the menu again and then say new action. So we'll call this DTP, delete transparent pixels, at 128 threshold. So we're going to go ahead and click on record. When you do that, you can see a little record button is on. So, and we just go through the process of what you would do to delete those transparent pixels while it records what you're doing, and then we stop it. So the first thing I do is I right click on the layer and I duplicate the layer. So, and I don't give it any specific name, I just let it duplicate it. So now I've got a copy of my initial layer. This layer is the layer that I'm gonna modify. I don't wanna make any changes to the original. So once I have my layer here, I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, control left click on the thumbnail. And you can see as I do that, this is loading the steps that I'm doing. So there was the duplicate, uh, duplicate current layer. Um, it set an action to the transparency channel by when I control clicked on the thumbnail. Now when I press Q, you'll see up here, it sets quick mask of the current selection. So, and then at this point, we go to image adjustments, threshold. I'm going to leave the value at 128 because that's what this action's for. Click on OK. So you can see it added the threshold of uh, 128. We go ahead and click Q to get out of um, quick mask mode. Um, I do a Control Shift I to select inverse. You can see it did that there, inverse. We hit delete on the keyboard. It deletes the dead pixels, and then I just do a control D to deselect. So it shows another set selection to none. So at that point, I would go ahead and click stop. So there's my action. So the way you run an action now is you go into your folder DTP128. I'm going to delete this layer. You can actually see too when I select and deselect. If you look at the image around like the reef area, kind of in the Christmas, you can see it removes those transparent pixels. So I'm going to delete this layer because again, I'm just going to run this action on my initial layer. So you select your initial layer, click on DTP 128 and you just click play. And that literally just ran. I mean, it created my new layer, ran through all these steps, cleaned it up. So now reality is I can, you know, use the new layer and export that out. And then for the print process, print it and not have that white border around my image. So the reason I did this one, DTP 128, is you can come here. I think you might be able to copy these. I've never copied one before. I don't see that close group so ultimately what I would do and maybe there's another way to do it and if so uh, mention it in the comments below and let me know um, I would do a new action um, here and I would call it DTP 200 and then when I get to that command in my action process for the threshold I would set 200 I'll just go through it so DTP 200. Actually, I'm going to cancel this because I want to clean this up. So delete the layer. This one's visible. So now we're going to go to this folder, menu, new action, DTP 200. And now it's recording. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, do my same process. I'm going to duplicate this layer give it the name that it gives it. So there's the duplicated layer. So I'm going to control click. I'm going to do Q. I'm going to go to image adjustments threshold. Again, I want this one to be 200 to take out a little bit more. Press enter. Um, Q, control shift I, and then delete. And then control D to deselect. So then I'll click stop. So now I've got two actions under my DTP folder. I've got one that does it at 128, another one that does it at 200. So depending on how much I want it to pull out, how aggressive I want it to be, I can come here, select my layer, open it up. Actually, when it's selected, you click the play button, 
and it runs. I mean, it's literally that fast. It's done. So you're not having to go through what I've been showing you. You literally click a button. So, and what I probably can do as well is I can, you can export this. So I can say file, um, save actions, and then you can save it onto your, you know, um, your computer and it's an ATN file. And if you have Adobe, uh, normally just double clicking the file will load those actions into your computer so then you don't have to create them at all you just come in here and when you go into your actions you'll have a DTP folder you go oh that's the one I want click play and it's I mean it's done it's deleted those transparent pixels so um, I hope this video was helpful for you again if you're somebody that's sending off artwork to a printer and you're getting it back with a white border um, hopefully the printer would um, give you some kind of insight that um, that is happening. The downside is a lot of DTF printers are super busy. I mean, the amount of artwork they have coming in to print and literally on their website, when you're ordering stuff, they tell you, we are going to print what you send us. You know, whatever you, however bad it is, <laughs> we're going to print it. You know, so um, we try to take a little bit of time to look at images, see where we're going to see issues or problems, email the customer, and uh, kind of go from there. So if you're having these issues, don't have Photoshop, get a subscription. Pay 20 bucks a month. And again, if you're buying, if you're buying transfers and garments and pressing garments for clients that you're selling, these images and garments too i mean i professionally believe you have an obligation to make sure that you're taking care of that artwork to um, make sure that it's printed correctly um, on those garments so that's my video for today um, if you want to check out our website it's www.custommadebyus.com um, if you like the video please click the thumbs up uh, subscribe to our channel click the bell notification to be notified when I post new videos and as always I appreciate you guys and I'll see you on the next video